substance and the pressing issue uh, of our current time, and that is social justice and policing. Uh, the White House, of course, uh, promised us there would be a substantial portion of the speech devoted to that. Here now, a sampling we'll discuss on the other side. We've all seen the need of injustice on the neck of black Americans. Now's our opportunity to make some real progress. Eugene, did he hit the issue squarely enough for the audience watching for that issue? I, you know, I, I think he did. I think he hit it as squarely as he could because, on the one hand, he, he wanted to, to, to be straightforward and, and bold in his remarks. On the other hand, he wanted to leave room for a negotiation, the negotiations that are, are ongoing between Senator Tim Scott on the Republican side and Senator Cory Booker and, and Congresswoman Karen Bass on the, on the Democratic side to try to, to, to reach, uh, get to something that will actually pass uh, the Senate. Uh, and so he, um, if, if he, if he, held back a little bit in that part of the speech. I think it was um, to, to give room for that negotiation to perhaps bear, bear fruit. Um, and, and throughout the speech, he kind of kept that in mind. You know, he, he, he wanted to leave room for um, a, a negotiation that fell somewhat short of, of the maximum he's asking for, but that actually made progress. A.B., there's been a lot of column inches spent on the fact that something about Biden has flummoxed the opposition party, uh, certainly where uh, attempts at personal attacks uh, have fallen flat. Senator Cruz trotted out the um, attack phrase, uh, boring but radical, which went over a lot like Senator Cruz's last attempt at a vacation. Is that all there is? Are they left to simply attack him on substance, on the merits? Oh, absolutely. Look, they've all admitted so privately and some of them publicly that, you know, you just can't attack your grandpa. He's the nicest guy. There was an incredible uh, cartoon from the, I mean, a uh, meme from The Onion tonight that Biden's new child care program is to just let everyone drop their youngster, their toddlers off between eight and five at the White House. And He's got one in a front pack, and they're all painting the curtains and jumping on the desk. It, it's it's the way that he speaks to everybody. No attack, no gratuitous, indulgent, um, partisan digs tonight, uh, trying to appeal to everybody as in, in, in the most common terms as he can. Speaking of shared pain, the way we feel about caring for elderly people, the way we feel about our children falling behind in school, the way we feel about disease, it, it, it's it's just what he does best, and it's why, you know, it, he has met the moment in terms of, of, of being elected president and handling these dueling crises. It is going to be extremely difficult for him to get these proposals passed. But as I said, in terms of the polling approval ratings he has so far, they've la outlasted what people, you know, usually have long before the 100-day mark. There's usually a plunge. And if the way that he spoke to those uh, middle voters, middle of the electorate voters tonight, um, continue to, to keep him popular. That's tough for Republicans. Alicia, one of the toughest uh, spots he was in going in tonight was on immigration. What do you make of what we got from him? I think that there were a lot of advocates who would have liked to have heard the president talk about families and children who are still being kept in detention. That said, I think they were also knew there was the possibility that immigration didn't even get touched tonight. And I think the way you heard the president approaching it is exactly right, which is the status quo is not working. That is something that every American can agree on. You can agree that the system is broken. We know that there are things that are wildly popular, you know, preserving protections for uh, DACA recipients. Uh, extending protections for those who have temporary protective status, um, a, a pathway to citizenship for farm workers who were deemed essential during this pandemic. So that doesn't get you to the 11 million undocumented um, having a pathway to citizenship that most advocates would like to see, but it gets you a part of the way. So I think the fact that he was willing to say, hey guys, we agree about all of this. Let's come to the table and get this done. It, it was a good starting point. 
best analysis in the business we have offered you tonight. So appreciative of these four friends to stay up with us and start off our hour. Phil Rucker, Alicia Menendez, Eugene Robinson, A.B. Stoddard, many thanks. Coming up after.